Hello and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekender show from the Sunday show today and I hope everyone is enjoying their bank holiday weekend, which you should do. You really should. Put your feet up, relax. I think most of the leagues now have finished. You may have one or two leagues who are having um, the remains of the cup final days. Um, if there's any leagues out there still trying to catch up on the grass pitches, um, that's going into early June, I think. So good luck to all those leagues. Let's hope you get them finished, but I'm sure you will do being a Sunday and getting the games out the way. I'm sure they would have finished today. So um, well done to all the leagues. Every league who's carried out all the grassroots football right the way through the season, putting up with all kinds, we know that. Um, it could be from poor behaviour from the sidelines, poor behaviour towards the committees, poor behaviour towards the referees that you've got to deal with as well as fixtures. Um, so strong committees, all well done to each and every one of you who have um, made sure that all the kids have finally finished their games. And it must have been successful for many leagues out there as well, um, or should I say teams. But commiserations to all those who come close to winning a cup final or come close to winning the league and it just wasn't their year. So they're going to push again for next season and they can only get better, can't they? They can only develop. Teams will develop, get stronger and there'll be different ball games going ahead in the leagues as well because it's all development. As you get older, it gets better. Games become better, um, parents become better, or do they, or do they get worse? Especially on cup final days, we know what happens, it's for some reason the passion takes over and the verbal abuse and the aggressive behaviour comes out on some, just a minority, just a minority of parents, we all know that, but it's that minority who can ruin it for everyone else. So if you're irate and you expect that you're going to you know, put your vocals above everyone else at junior football leagues and the kids will all hear you as well shouting and screaming, then it all stops. It all stops. Well, it's all about grassroots football. It's all about the kids enjoying themselves. It's all about development. It's all about the referees developing their skills, going to another level. And that's what they're trying to do to achieve a better level majority. I don't know some kids out there are just taking up the referee courses because they just want to earn a few bob. Well, that's fine. That really is because at least we've had plenty of referees throughout the season. Now, I'd like to hear your point of view on referees officiating as well because there's been a lot more coming to the game. We haven't been short of referees. If we're short of referees, that's just, well, it's one of those things. There hasn't been many in the leagues that I've been involved with and I've watched um, I think once our referee didn't turn up and I had to referee and I hated it. So this is why we say no ref, no game. Because it's unfair on a manager or a coach who's running that, that team, who's running that game and trying to make it fair for everyone out there, you know, because you haven't done your course and that's what it's all about. And the pressure is on because the kids are actually on the pitch when they're going off, who's the next sub? And this is what you're trying to do. And you're trying to keep it all intact and make sure that the game flows and it can't, if the kids are all shouting and screaming, it puts you right off on your decisions, you can't keep up with the game, you're trying to get decisions right and hey yo, it's one of those things and that's why many managers and coaches out there do not like to referee and the referee or the manager on the other side, when I asked him, it's your turn to do the second half, oh I'm not doing that, I have to do the full game or practically I think Sophie turns up in the last five, ten minutes and she took over for me. And it was easier then. You could sort out the subs and do things. But it was hard, believe me. Anyway, this is why we always say no ref, no game. So whenever you're out and about, tournament, summer league, which we'll talk about very, very shortly, and friendlies, and yeah, you name it, any games that you have in grassroots football, we want you to make sure that you start encouraging the kids to play football. There's nothing wrong with passion. We don't want to take the passion away from the game. We want that, we want loads of encouragement, loads of clap and support the kids. Forget what the referee does, forget the referee is on that pitch. If the referee blows the whistle, you ignore it as a parent or a manager or a coach and tell the kids to do exactly the same. Get on with it because that referee never ever tells the kids what to do. They'll, you'll hear encouragement from them, but you'll never hear you should have hit that, that was a shot, you should have passed that, that was a pass. 
you'd never hear. And if you ask the kids that question, they start wondering, so why should a kid or why should an adult question the referee on his or her decision? It's wrong. So the kids get the message, they start thinking, oh, that's right, they never asked me what I've done or what, how I missed that or why I didn't pass that. So it does, and we, we'll drum that in, I drum that in to all our kids all the time. And look, you know, I'm proud of all these all the time for our kids. Two seasons, and we win all these trophies between the, the club, you know. Absolutely fantastic. I'm over the moon over it. Yeah, why shouldn't I brag about this? These are kids, these are youngsters. This is the way I wanted the club to run. Kids playing football, developing their skills, and they've done it. They've done it. Honestly, I, I just can't thank the kids and the parents enough for the two, just having two teams. And honestly, I, I think in my record books, these kids kids will always be remembered as being superstars. And I know my grandson plays for the under eights. Ruben, absolutely brilliant. And he's really Im improving his game and he's looking good. And my son, I'm not the only one who stepped down. My son's done the same. And I explained on last night's show as to why we stepped down and as to what we're move, doing when we move forward. Now, my son, Michael, is just supporting Ruben, my grandson. He wants to stand back and be a parent. He's had enough of all the admin, exactly the same as me and all what's going on. And especially the jealousy within grassroots football. Teams do not like you to win anything. They really, really don't. And that was the difference when we played the team the other week. That was brilliant. That was football at its best, honestly. And it was Crosby Stewart. And they said they really enjoyed. That is what it's all about. 4-3 could have gone either way. Honestly, we thought it was going to penalties, thought it was going their way. They missed a host of chances, our lads held on and they won their second trophy. And that is what grassroots football is all about. Not just the winning, but the performance. Honestly, I did not expect our team to go and win two trophies. They did it in their first season, exactly the same as the under sevens who moved on to under eights. Come on. Some sort of a record. I'm packed myself on the back for starting the two clubs. And thanking my son, Michael, who's been brilliant, an inspiration with his team as well. And you've lost two good managers, honestly, because of all the admin and all the costs. And the price of grassroots football, honestly, it's it, it's gonna come to a big, big halt very, very soon indeed. And you can see teams folding. And that is not just about the admin and what have you. It's the changes that I see coming as well in kids' football. No heading of the ball, um, indirect free kicks, but that's another show that we'll discuss later on and we're going to invite some managers in to give their points of view over the decision as well. And that's coming in next season. So really, we're both glad we're stepping down because I, I couldn't do that. And people say, oh, you'll get used to it. I don't know who's sitting there making these laws up, rules up, and obviously, talking about dementia, we don't know the facts, the figures. Is it real? Because the balls have gone lighter. These are my opinions, by the way. These are my opinions, no one else's opinion. So um, we're going to have really hot debates about this before the season kicks off next year. I don't know whether any summer leagues are carrying that in now. I doubt it very, very much. They'll just play from the season as they've finished and go into it. And I do know there's one or two leagues already committed to doing this as well. So, you know, we might get one or two kids in as well to talk about it. But in the meantime, everyone's back and they're doing the summer leagues and tournaments. Now then, teams are finishing their winter league and they're going directly into summer leagues. Is it burnout time? We're not putting our team in into a summer league because we believe that the kids deserve a break, but there'll be one or two parents who'll put their child in another team as well. Fair enough, fair dues, that's entirely up to them. Um, but myself, I've just developed a team, a first team, and I've talked to the coach Sophie, she agrees with me, there'll be one or two tournaments they can go in over the summer months, but not every week. We don't want to burn them out, we want them to develop, and playing football day in, day out is going to really burn them out. So we'll make these kids stronger, but you, believe me or not, I know it will for next season, but I'm not involved in the teams next season but I see it week in week out day in day out and I just watch all kids develop and I watch coaches I watch managers and I watch committees and I watch referees 
And honestly, I can have an honest opinion about it because we've been going since 2003, bringing people together. But we know a lot about grassroots football. So we're going to bring that into the forefront. We're going to discuss all that. We're going to see if there's burnout time. How many teams out there? Let me know, Mal, at com, who are carrying straight on with summer leagues. A couple of weeks break and then they're back into it. And then a couple of weeks break and then they're back in to the Winter League again. But all that rigmarole starts again now. Everyone is putting in the admin, all waiting for the whole game system to light up and say, systems go, get your fees in, get your affiliation fee in, get your insurance in, get your photographs in, get your addresses in, get your emails in, do your courses, safeguard and your DBS, and your first aid courses, your level one coaching, you name it, there's a million co courses on there now. And everyone knows my pet hate. I don't like volunteers to be charged the amount of money that they're getting charged to do these courses. There's got to be leeway, there's got to be some sort of funding to help these. Clubs will maybe pay it themselves, but it's not the clubs paying it, it's your parents paying it for them. And that's the way the, the county FAs look at it. Well, we do it because you're charging your parents, so it's good for us. But it's not, it's not. And the admin, volunteer, couldn't do it anymore. Sorry, I'm doing someone else's paid job um, as a volunteer. I'd love a hundred volunteers to come and do my work. I really would. And me sit there and say, yeah, great, you're doing a great job, keep it up. I mean, getting a wage at the end of it. Wouldn't happen in support work, would it? No, not in a million years. So I'd like your thoughts on all what we're talking about, what we're debating. Um, and we're going to go into it in a big, in more detail as we go along and move on to the season now. We've got big games, or we've had big games with Man United and Man City in the FA Cup final also. We've got your Southampton Leeds wanting to come up to the Premier League. But we've had big changes as well in Premier League managers and what's going to happen, what players want to move on, what players don't want to move on. And how many players that you hear that they want, on, they want to move on because they want Champions League football or they want to win trophies. How many players have moved on and not won a trophy? Who have stated this? Who have stated it? It's just, and we all know, it's a, it's a way to move on, but you've only there one to two years and then you want to move and you want to make bigger and better. Imagine if you could do that all the time in your job, but you don't. And all these managers and all these parents, sorry, all these players and the clubs who pay them the full wage when they're out injured because they are celebrities so they get a full wage if they're not playing. And how many teams like Man City have you seen players sitting on the bench right the way through getting 100 and odd thousand, 250,000 just for sitting on the bench? And you look at Rashford now, everyone's having a right go with him, he's gone down, he's taking a dip in form. He's lost his England place. Um, will that finish him? No, he'll come back better and more prepared. But people are saying, play more football rather than feed more kids, you know, and that's what you're concentrating on. And I disagree with that because he has been brilliant in the community looking after kids, so you can't knock that. He, at least he's given a lot back to the community and to the kids. I think, you know, these decisions are wrong. Uh, maybe Rashford needs another team. Because if he came to Liverpool, he would improve tenfold, I assure you. Um, but obviously with the commitments and the, the fans, you'd be hated if he comes to Anfield, vice versa as well. You know what I mean, with players moving on. Uh, it has happened, but they've gone via other routes, haven't they? Gone to a team and then come back to a team. And that's the way they look at it. In two years' time, I'll move back. You know, Jürgen Klopp's gone now. Arnie Slot's moving in. Um, we just don't know what to expect, we're just awaiting now what players are going to move on, how the games are going to go, but it is one of those things isn't it now um, where at least managers are moving on and not being sacked or they're told to move on without putting that thing up, we sacked them. Like Chelsea, I can't, you know, Pochettino, uh, if he came available just beforehand I think Liverpool would have swooped on him because the type of manager who can make a difference at Anfield, but obviously he's moved on and we have our manager now. No disrespect to Alice Lott, um, but that's the way things go, I suppose. Anyway, I've dropped down, my son's dropped down, there's managers left, right and centre moving out of grassroots football. How are these changes, by the way, the throw-ins instead of, um, or indirect free kicks instead of throw-ins, how is it going to affect you as a coach, as a manager? 
Are you looking at it now and saying, do you know what, I've had enough. The game is changing. Not for the better, because football is football. Years and years and years, the game has gone on because they say it's a contact sport. Are they going to take away tackles, slide tackles soon? I think they will. I really do think they will. And kids are going to be worse footballers by the time they're playing in amateur football, Sunday football. They're going to be worse. They're going to be scared to head the ball. Ball comes to them. They're going to be talking. They're not going to learn. But I know there'll be coaches, backstreet coaches now, we'll say, who are on the parks week in, week out, teaching the kids the throw-ins. They can't do it on the football pitch. We know that. That's going to stop. But they'll do it in the parks because there's no one there to police them and tell them they can't do it and they're penalised. And obviously, I don't think anyone... If any referee is starting to give cards out for throwing the ball or heading the ball, I, I, I think that is totally disrespectful. And that's going to start more irate parents shouting from the sidelines. And it won't be the referee's fault. It really won't. They are only interpreting the laws of the game. They're telling you exactly what they've been told to do. But I know irate parents and spectators Managers and coaches will start shouting and screaming at the referee because of this. Now I think if you have an indirect free kick, I think you bring the walls closer. I really do because that will make sure that the kids pass the ball. I bet they haven't thought about that. So instead of like 10 yards, bring the wall closer because if you don't, the kids are going to put those indirect free kicks right into the box and no one can hit them. So they'll all be using the shoulders, they'll all be diving up, kicking. And I know there'll be more injuries because kids will be trying to do overhead kicks. They'll be trying to go and kick higher. And they'll be doing themselves more injury for stretching. So we worked that out and we looked at that. Anyway, your thoughts please. I'd love to hear the feedback off yourselves. Man, I don't text the line dot com. Um, these are all my opinions. These are all what I'm seeing and what I expect to see. But I do believe that there'll be a lot more coaches walking away from the game and not only will we be talking about referees not having enough we'll be talking about not having enough coaches and we'll be pleading for them to come in to the game won't they so let's see what happens let's see what goes on and let's see what it brings but at the end of the day it's all about grassroots football it's all about the kids developing their skills and i'm going to bring in the kids and ask them those questions do they have burnout in summer leagues do they feel tired or would they play seven days a week? I know I did. I know I really, really did. And that was it, because as soon as that ball came out, you want to kick it, regardless. But if you go cast your mind back when you've got five aside and players don't turn up and you can only use five players, the kids are shattered. The kids, five players, no subs, no break, doing 20 minutes each way, they're shattered. They're playing the game and they're on the knees. You can see it, but they'll go and they'll go and they'll go. And then they'll tell you themselves that they want to come off for a break. And you can't really say to them, no, you can't, because then it's four players. And it, it, it's hard the way you're developing. And I'd like to know who sits there and develops the games. And I'm sure I'll find out soon, um, because I want to try and get the government bodies in here as well to answer my questions, your questions. And we'll put it to them as well, even if you read them out, question from so-and-so, and you'll get your answer. But honestly, you'll see a difference with our YouTube channel. It'll go bigger and better, and our guests will come in, want to talk about the changes, and watch what happens throughout the season. Okay, we're coming to the end of our show. I hope you've enjoyed all these weekend show. Carry on enjoying your bank holiday weekend, and I think the kids are off on half term, so I'm sure one or two you'll be going away and enjoying it. I'll be going away on the 5th of June to Cyprus, and I'm going to come back with a lovely tan and my batteries will be recharged, I assure you. I'm going to make a difference to the grassroots football and what we see out and about. So, well done to everyone from all of you in the Winter League, so all the committees, well done. Hats off to you. We'll see you next season. No doubt we'll see you on the road because I'll still be catching up with one or two committees doing the Summer League, especially our KB partners up there as well. And we'll give you more info about their fixes and how they're doing because I'll be calling up to see them and watch their games 
as well. So in the meantime, put your feet up, relax, enjoy the rest of the bank holiday weekend and we'll see you on Friday in the, the last show before I go away. Good night, God bless.